Good morning. Welcome to the Monday, May 23rd, 2016 workshop of the Orlando City Council. And we have a special treat today. Our friends from Osceola County have uh, traveled up to brief us on things that are going on. And we've had a great history of collaboration and partnership, um, really, as a region. But of course, I'm from Osceola County, so that's a special relationship for me. And we have three of the county commissions, so they're going to convene a joint meeting, I guess, with us. Commissioner Janer, who is the chair. Commissioner, thank you. Commissioner Hawkins and Commissioner Grebe, thank you for being here. Okay, uh, Don Fisher, the Osceola County Manager, is going to kick off the presentation, so we welcome you, Don. Are you on, Commissioner Janer? Okay. Good morning, everybody. It's really exciting for us to be here. So on behalf of my Commissioner, pull that mic over towards you. you. There you go. Perfect. This is vertically challenged people's problems. <laughs> <laughs> As I was saying, uh, I'm Viviana Janer, a chairwoman of the Osceola Board of County Commissioners. And on behalf of our, my fellow commissioners, some of which are here today, I want to thank Mayor Dyer and the Orlando City Council for inviting us here this morning. We always appreciate the city's support as a regional partner and also the willingness of you to learn more about this really important regional project. Of course, um, we already have a great relationship with Mayor Dyer who hasn't forgotten his roots in Osceola County. So the Florida Advanced Manufacturing Research Center is really a um, organic approach to economic development with Osceola County providing the infrastructure and with private companies attracted to invest so they could conduct the research necessary to advance smart sensor technology. As you'll hear from our county manager, Don Fisher, and also from Chester Kennedy, the CEO for the International Consortium for Advanced Manufacturing Research, or ICOMAR for short, that this is not just an Osceola County project. So we're really excited to share our vision here today with the city of Orlando because we are connected in so many ways. So we look forward to further collaboration and partnerships so that all our citizens can ben benefit from this really exciting and amazing project. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Mayor Commissioners, thank you so much for having us here. This is a, it's a big day for Osceola County to be invited to Orlando City Hall, the, uh, the hub of what happens in Central Florida, we believe. And what I'd like to cover is a little bit about Osceola County, things some of you may not know. Um, Mayor Dyer will probably know most of this. But we've tried to model what we've been doing off of the success of the city of Orlando. And some of the things I'm going to touch on shows that as we think forward and provide vision as we move forward, we're taking a lot of the successes that Orlando has already achieved. And Mayor Dyer was in St. Cloud Chamber of Commerce last week, and he said a few things that really resonated for us in Osceola, and that's we already are regional. It is our Performing Arts Center, our Orlando Magic, our zoo, and we'd like to touch on this will be our sensor facility as well. So I'm going to head into the presentation. I'm told that if I press the space bar is all that I need to do. Great. So uh, there's a lot going on in Osceola County right now from a growth perspective, uh, more than what you might imagine. And I'm going to touch on some of that in a moment. Uh, we are the 18th fastest growing county in the state of, in the United States. Just give me one moment here. So we are the 18th fastest growing county in the United States. I, by, as registered by Forbes magazine, I, and I'll cover why that is the case in just a couple of moments. A lot of it has to do with the development that's taking place in our community. We are also the most capitally invested in county in Florida by smart asset. We are second to Orange County. Osceola County is the 76th highest invested in county in the United States. To I give an idea of the spread, Orange County is about 220. A lot of that is a result of private development and the DRIs and, and the growth we have uh, taking place in our community. Our growth rate this last year was 4%. The Central Florida area was about 2%. Uh, we're fortunate. 
uh, compared to a lot of other counties that we only have two incorporated cities. It makes us nimble and gives us the ability to get things done. Uh, the cities of Kissimmee and St. Cloud. We also have some significant unincorporated areas, one in particular, Point Siena. If Point Siena were an incorporated city, it'd have a population of about 82,000 people, making it one of the largest cities in the, in the Central Florida area. To give an idea of the mass of the county, it is 1,500 square miles. When you're driving on the turnpike and you come to Yeehaw Junction, you're still in Osceola. So it takes a, a significant amount of time to travel uh, uh, through, through our community as well. We're the sixth largest county in the state of Florida. But like Orange County, we are also a destination. Uh, we are known for a variety of things from cattle ranching to tourism, uh, to the Silver Spurs Rodeo, the oldest rodeo east of the Mississippi, established in 1944. We also have the oldest operating courthouse in the state of Florida and the oldest hardware store in continuous operation in the state of Florida. Perhaps most famously, though, we're known for the location <laughs> of Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer. <laughs> Second baseman with Osceola High School, is that what it's Kissimmee? What's yeah, high school? Osceola High School. Cowboys with a K. <laughs> I, so a lot like Florida, our economy relies heavily on agriculture. We have the largest and 10th largest calf to cow appara cattle operations in the United States. Uh, Deseret being the largest, Adams Ranch being the 10th largest. Uh, they are very important to the, our, our county's economy as well as the state's economy, and they, they drive an awful lot of what happens in our community, particularly from our heritage perspective. We are also uh, very large for when it comes to tourism development tax collection, not near what Orange County is, but we're the 10th largest tourism development tax, tax collector in the United States. This year we'll bring in about $50 million, and our growth continues to be uh, the delta is greater in a quicker pace than surrounding counties and counties in the state of Florida as well. We are, our niche happens to be vacation homes. Over 50% of our inventory and what was brought in from a TDT tax collection was through vacation homes. So the Champions Gate area, Reunion, uh, very strong in that, in that market. And we continue to encourage that market as well as setting us apart from something different. But there's also uh, several businesses located in the county that the uh, Orlando Commission may not be familiar, or you may. Uh, Champions Gate, Harmony, uh, although the uh, Atlanta Braves, and we ha did have the Houston Astros here, uh, we don't see our, our, us being in the spring training business from this point going forward. We're still entertaining a couple of teams, but that is doubtful that they would do that from a regional perspective because they need to be close to each other for that model to work. We have reunion. Uh, Gaylord Palms, but we also have Tupperware's international headquarters. Many people think that Tupperware is in Orlando, Orange County. It is in the metro area, but it is an unincorporated Osceola County off of Orange Blossom Trail, one of our biggest employers. And the part of Disney that we have is ESPN, Wide World of Sports. So Orlando, so the, the, it's the Orlando, Kissimmee, Sanford, Metropolitan Services area. Our area is going to double in population by 2040. 119% of that growth, though, is going to take place in Osceola, and there's a reason for that. Uh, knowing, uh, through working with the state of Florida, knowing that we're going to double in population, we uh, try to proceed very deliberately in a specific direction tied to economic development. So we did a cluster study about five years ago driving the way our comprehensive plan works, driving the county strategic plan, driving how we spend the monies in our budget. I, most particular though, the, the tourism, the ag is not a surprise, but at the top of that list, we determined five years ago that medical and scientific research and manufacturing was something that we should be pursuing. And that's really not a surprise consider considering the success of Medical City and the things happening in and around that area. So this represents the three-county region. This is the Orlando MSA, the mauve, the not mauve, the putty color, we'll call it. The three counties that you, you see outlined in red, each one of us has an adopted urban growth boundary. So the difference being that within that, between that, that uh, putty color and the red line represents the greenfield areas in which our counties can expand. 
Seminole has about 1,000 acres left. Orange has about 10,000 acres. Osceola has 104,500 acres. So if we're talking about the Orlando MSA doubling in population, think about where it's going to occur, and this is why we think it's an important connection back to Orlando, that as we operate as a region and align our resources, working together is gonna to be very important because Orlando touches our border, we touch Orlando's border, and doing things in coordination is gonna be very important. Also, at the, the growth pace that we're on right now, uh, we are projected, if we continue this trend, and you know business cycles come and go, we will pass Seminole County in population by 2029. So if, you, if the city thinks about leveraging how we're gonna move forward, we're closer to you than Seminole, and we're gonna be, have a larger population than them, uh, more than likely in about the next 15 years. Our adopted urban growth boundary is 380 square miles. That is 50 square miles in the entire size of Seminole County altogether. So as we were planning on, on moving forward, we also uh, implemented a series of infrastructure. So before we roll up into the Central Florida Expressway, we have our Osceola County Expressway. And on April 30th, we opened the first leg called Point Santa Parkway, which, in, is, which is in the lower left-hand side of your screen. And as you know, we've been working on, Commissioner Gray will tell you that we've been working on Osceola Parkway extension. A little bit of controversy there is that whichever corridor comes up into Orange and Orlando and then back down again. But the intent behind what you see here is to complete the Central Florida Beltway around our urban area, around that Orlando MSA. So we've got the first leg started. We're looking at connecting that Point Santa Parkway to 532, which is the Polk Osceola County Line Road, and then onto a connection to I-4 429. South out of Point Siena to the Florida's Turnpike, back up north uh, through uh, the Deseret properties, Sunbridge, connecting Osceola Parkway extension and completing the full loop to either the Beach Line or 417. So as we were planning all of this, as I indicated that we adopted a cluster study and we evaluated changing our strategic, our comprehensive plan to accommodate the growth that was coming. We have master planned down to street level 50,000 acres of property accommodate, accommodating uh, 182,000 new residential homes, 30 million square feet of retail, 13 million square feet of office, uh, 23 million square feet of industrial and institutional spaces and hotel rooms. That is just in the Sunbridge area alone. The other area, the remaining 35,000 acres is another series, double that, and, and then some. So a reason why we picked that particular location and leveraged Sunbridge the way that we did was what Orlando and Orange County had done with Medical City. That Sunbridge property is closer to Medical City than Innovation Way is. So when we evaluated what would be a right location to invest in infrastructure and try to get a willing property owner, developer to help us along, we looked at the San Diego region, the biotech region, and what we found is that anything around a 10 mile area is a sweet spot. You will get businesses that will be attracted, although it may take time, to come that, to that particular area. But we see that that's what's gonna be happening for our future. We haven't been doing this though, this particular part from a regional perspective in the, in the, in the dark. Uh, we have been working with uh, not only Dean German from the College of Medicine, but also the developers of Tavistock. And, and talking to Tavistock about how the things happening at Lake Nona and the sensor project that we'll talk about in a moment can complement each other so that as sensors are developed, can it be done in alignment with USTA or a, a healthy village or a healthy community from the medical side of things, just as, as one particular start. We've also, you've seen in the map and how close this is to the Orlando International Airport. We have talked with both the chair of the board for Goa as well as their executive director about how the airport can help out with the sensor project and how the sensor project could potentially help out the airport. One issue that we're all very familiar with is, is sensors, sensor, I'm, I'm sorry, security, and how sensors can help out from a security standpoint, which considering the lines right now that are being criticized, not at our airport, but throughout the nation, uh, getting people through screening quicker could be a very beneficial and valuable thing as well. Uh, we, as well, our segment of uh, SunRail is become, it will be online 
uh, hopefully no later than the first quarter of 2018. It will add three stops in Osceola County, the Tupperware location, which has already started to undergo development as a result of that station being planned, downtown Kissimmee, and Point Siena. The downtown Kissimmee location is one of the few stops along the way that's multimodal. Not only does it have Sunrail, it has, uh, it has a Lynx bus comes out of there, Greyhound, and Amtrak as well. Great things for downtown. But the reason, the, the, the main reason why we're, we're here, so you see on the bubble the little yellow dot at the bottom, that's the, the location of the Florida Advanced Manufacturing Research Center. Uh, located within 15 minutes of the Orlando International Airport, 15 minutes of Medical City, 30 minutes from downtown Orlando, 20 minutes from Disney, 60 minutes from Port Canaveral. Located right at US 192 and Florida's Turnpike within the Orlando, Metro, Orlando Kissimmee, Sanford, Metropolitan Services area. So for all of us, it is a very strategic location that we are starting, I guess, this discussion with the mayor and the council about how can we work together to make this the best reality that it could possibly be and, and work it from the ground up versus trying to leverage something in that may or may not be successful. So it's a 109,000 square foot facility that's currently under construction on a piece of property that's about 300 acres in size that Osceola County owns with no debt. So what does that mean in terms of us being a developer? So we, don't, we can leverage the value of that property against companies that might want to come in and locate in Orlando uh, and, and, and provide really free property if we so decide as a community to do that and if the commission decides to do that because it would be their decision. Where that's valuable is that Enterprise Florida and the state is in a hiatus right now when it comes to economic development funding. So there's one thing that we can do by using this property to help out all of Central Florida to bring businesses to our community and jobs for, to our community. This right now is, is, a, is a layout of the property. We have hired Perkins and Will to master plan the site. We're trying to make it connected with downtown Kissimmee with trails and, and bike paths and a variety of other things. And in fact, there's a consultant in the room right now that's one that's working on trying to be sure that that's done in the right way. It'll be within two miles of the Sunrail station from downtown Kissimmee and across the street from our Osceola Heritage Park. But none of this would be uh, possible, or we wouldn't have gotten as far as we have, uh, particularly with state funding. You know, uh, the thanks goes out to Governor Scott for having provided the funding this year. It was a, it was a big deal for Osceola County and a, and, a, and a big year for Central Florida as well. And the, uh, the, the House Speaker and Senate President, as well as Representative Simmons, Latvala, and a variety of, uh, Representative LaRosa, uh, Senator Soto, a variety of people, too many to thank. Uh, from a community effort to get that done. But we had to r hire somebody to run the International Consortium for Advanced Manufacturing uh, Research. Uh, Chester Kennedy was hired as the CEO for ICOMAR. And the wonderful thing about Chester coming on board is he's from Central Florida, and he knew what we were doing. But Chester just wasn't given this job because of who he is. He is a retired VP from Lockheed Martin and had just retired around the time this, this job was going to be coming available, and he competed for it on an international level. Uh, the ICOMAR board right now is uh, representatives from UCF, uh, MJ Swallow, Randy Bears from the Corridor, uh, a gentleman, his name is Dave Sadoff, who's a contract worker from Semitech in Austin, and I'm the Osceola County representative. So we interviewed Chester, he won this job, and we're thrilled to have him. And at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Chester to drill down to what it is that we're actually doing. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Don, and thank you, Mayor and Council, for allowing us to, to be here and share a little bit of the excitement that's, uh, that's going on with you and maybe uh, try to put this in, in uh, a little bit of perspective if we haven't thoroughly confused you now, talking about the farm and then the, then the, the, the farm with the C on the end there, sort of the spelling of the little uh, thing to talk about the center. But uh, ICOMAR then is the consortium that operates that center and, and is really focused on the next generation of sensors. And I get the question all the time, so wait a minute, what in the world is a sensor? And uh, I, th I think, uh, you know, one example that, that maybe helps put that in a little bit of perspective is to think about the smartphones that we carry around with us uh, all the time, right? And, and, and what has changed them, transformed them from being just something that we pick up and and uh, make a voice communications over or maybe send a text over to doing so many other things for us. 
I sat down not long ago and, and made a, a list of the things that this device has replaced for me in my life, and it was over 30 items long. You know, and, and so you go do the same thing, but your, your Rolodex, your GPS perhaps might be in, in that category, uh, your contacts, uh, your, uh, in, in, in my case, my level. I was hanging pictures not long ago, and I don't even know where my level is, but the sensors in here give me a level. And, uh, you know, but so many things that we use this device for. My camera, I have no idea where my regular camera is anymore. This is good enough, right? Um, but there are about 18 sensors in, in a typical smartphone. And those sensors are really at the heart of what has transformed that from just being a communication device into being the thing that we rely on in our lives in so many ways every day. And, and the reconfiguration of those sensors are what the apps do. So you, when someone writes an app, it's some software that maybe pulls in some data analytics, uses a little connectivity back into the internet and the infrastructure, but it takes advantage of those sensors, whether that sensor is the camera, whether it's the GPS receiver, whether it's uh, one of the other more than, like I said, more than a dozen, about 18 sensors that are included uh, in a typical smartphone. But uh, so that's today's technology, and that's where we are relative to sensors today. And so if you try to think about, uh, you know, where, where are we going with that for the future? Uh, we had the privilege of, of hosting a conference here in uh, Central Florida region at, at the end of the year called uh, T-Sensors. And the T in that context was trillion. And it was focused on the types of sensors that were going to drive the, the 17 to 20 trillion sensors that you read about that are going to be interconnected by 2020 and, and are going to create the Internet of Things, or some people call it the Internet of Everything, or if you're in the medical field, it's IOMT, the Internet of Medical Things. But it's all those connected sensors. And I, I think that one of the things that, that was really a, a, an attention point for me in that conference were the economists that were talking about the impact that this next generation of sensors was going to have on the global economy. And uh, the, the folks from, from GE forecast that at being $32.5 trillion a year by 2025. That's, more, that's about twice what the total U.S. GDP is. The global impact of, of the economy from this next generation of sensors. Now, I think it's important that when we talk about that, that, that we don't get excited and think that it means that we're going to make that many, that we're going to make $32.5 trillion worth of these tiny little chips, right? It's, it's like the example that I used with the smartphone, is that those sensors become the enabler that allow a whole multitude of other layers of economic development on top of it. And, and so if you look at, at the, again, back to the example on the smartphones, I'm told that, that uh, the impact of, of the apps for smartphones is about, uh, is about worth 17 and a half million jobs globally. 17 and a half million jobs. Three and a half of those are app developers themselves. The rest of them are other folks that are involved in promotion, marketing, and other ways of exploiting the apps, but already impacting 17 million jobs in the world that didn't exist 10 years ago. I mean, I didn't know what an app was 10 years ago. You folks are more visionary than I am. You, you may have had, had insight that that was coming down the pipeline, but I didn't know what it was, much less an app developer or, or someone else that would find a way to take advantage of that. And when we had the opportunity to talk to these uh, brilliant minds that are working on the next generation of smart sensors, uh, I'm convinced it's going to impact every aspect of our lives. There are people out there that are working on these next uh, generation of sensors that are going to impact the way that we grow our, our food. Um, the sensors are going to get uh, to the point where they can be planted in a row of corn along with the corn every 10 or 15 feet. And you can do mass interrogation and you can adjust the nutrients that you provide and the water that you provide so that you have not only uh, less impact on the environment because you're not wasting water, you're not putting more nutrients in there than what need to be done, but you can also optimize the, uh, the growth. In the healthcare, in the health world, so many different new sensors coming online that are going to enable us to know so much more about what's going on inside our bodies. And so the, the great linkages that we have um, here in the area between uh, the University of Central Florida, the University of Florida, the University of South Florida, all the technical skills that we need 
not just in doing the materials work, not just in building the sensors themselves, but the data analytics, the ability to apply those, the, the life science piece to understand what it would mean if I can measure parts per billion of some uh, additional quantity or, or uh, something else in, in the environment. So putting all of that uh, together with things like uh, Medical City and all the great other infrastructure items that Don talked about really has put us uh, in a unique position. And so uh, uh, when we talked about uh, the building there a few slides back, this uh, is, a, is a recent uh, picture of, of the, uh, the, the Florida Advanced Manufacturing Research Center that ICOMAR will operate uh, in construction. The building is going to be, be uh, ready for us in, uh, in, in just about a year. Actually, in March of, of 2017, the contractors are a little bit ahead of schedule and have, uh, have promised to turn it over to us. We're going to be putting equipment in there probably before the end of this calendar year. But all that wouldn't have been possible, again, without the great partnership from, uh, from Osceola County, the visionary leadership that Don and the county commissioners had to appropriate money and to say that we're going to take this path. We believe that we can transform our economy and we're going to make the investments that are necessary to make that happen. Tremendous vision. I was up uh, last week talking to some folks from, uh, from DOD, and, and every time I get a chance to tell the story and, and, and look at it, people look at me like, oh my gosh, this is happening in Florida? Who was it that was so visionary to be able to come up with the idea to do that? Because everybody recognizes this didn't just start last week. This started before a lot of people would have even understood the impact of the next generation of sensors and what that could really mean. So these folks were uh, clearly visionary, and again, a, a lot of that uh, uh, credit goes to Don, the County Commission, and the folks from the University of Central Florida, Randy and the team from the High Tech Quarter that uh, were early to step in and to help uh, pull together money. And then, uh, as, as Don mentioned, we've, uh, we've, we've been able to get the state on board uh, in the last round here with uh, some significant funding from, uh, from the legislature and, and uh, the Department of Economic Opportunity. So it, it, uh, it represents, besides the technology piece, it's a new era, really, of international collaboration. Uh, and that collaboration covers a lot of different fronts. From the standpoint of pulling in industry partners and folks that are interested in being a part of that value chain and, and developing the next generation of technology, we're going to give them access to a capability that they would never have had access to under normal circumstances. Don mentioned I came, out of, uh, I came out of Lockheed Martin, and when I first heard they were doing this project down in Osceola County, I said, well, that's kind of interesting, but I wonder what they'll build down there in, in, in the way of, of microelectronic devices. And then uh, a few months later, they had the vision to start discussions about putting a design center on the front end of that, uh, of that center. Now suddenly, from a Lockheed Martin standpoint, my interest peaked. Because what, what had happened to us inside of Lockheed, we were early adopters of applying custom microelectronic solutions to military applications. But the technology changed so fast and our cycles of, of need were so stretched out so long that by the time that, that we would get a chance to do one of those designs, the skills of the people that had done the last one were, were either obsolete or they had enjoyed doing that kind of work and had moved on to a company where they could do that more often. The point being it's difficult to maintain a set of skills that are capable of taking a concept or even an electrical design and getting it mapped into the processes that can benefit from microelectronics fabrication capability. But we're going to have that capability in the design center that we're putting on uh, the front end of, of uh, our fabrication facility. And I know uh, the, the county commission has, or the, has, a, has an important vote today on, on that topic, looking at uh, uh, the final pieces in enabling that design center to, uh, to come together. But from, a, from a, an industry standpoint, it's opening up that capability. From a university standpoint, it's allowing the universities in our region to compete for R&D funds that they would not have otherwise been competitive for. It's giving them infrastructure. It's giving them a way to go after uh, new kinds of, of federal contracts that they would not uh, have been in, in a competitive state for. And certainly from, uh, from a government and supplier standpoint, uh, a lot of opportunities to attract uh, uh, different businesses and different industries here into the Florida region. So I'm going to wrap up here uh, uh, real quick and, and just talk about some of the things that are going on. I mentioned that it made an opportunity, created an opportunity for the universities to compete for research dollars that they wouldn't have otherwise 
been able to compete for. That's already uh, panned out when it enabled UCF to secure a significant role in uh, a federal grant that MIT was the lead entity on. And uh, that, that's around smart fibers. That's uh, work that will be done at the center, taking advantage uh, of the ICOMAR network. Uh, in addition to that, ICOMAR is a lead partner for a $349 million advanced sensors Department of Commerce initiative that's currently under evaluation. We're supporting the University of Texas on a $200 million one. The Design Center one I, is something I, that I already talked about. We expect a major announcement on that uh, in, in early July, uh, depending upon the vote from the County Commission uh, uh, today. We've got uh, the first multi-million dollar industry partner lined up for that Design Center. And again, uh, the building of the primary facility uh, being complete in uh, March of 2017. All right. Are, are there any uh, any any questions? Anything I can I can answer about uh, what we're doing, about how this all comes together? Who would be your competition going forward? <clears throat> so competition from uh, you know from the standpoint uh, of, of the microelectronics fabrication capability. There's two big uh, two big pockets uh, that remain in the U.S. in in, in that regard. One in Albany, New York, and and uh, and then the one in Austin, Texas. But they're really focused more on scaling the semiconductor industry versus enabling new capability to be introduced into that. So what I mean by that, their, their focus is primarily on how do I make larger and larger wafers and get smaller and smaller features on there. What we're focused on is a very stable point that is scalable to mass production, but we're focused on with the design center being able to open that capability up to companies that wouldn't have otherwise been in a position to have, have uh, competed to have their products made on, on that scale. If you look uh, more globally, uh, you know, there are regions in Eindhoven in the Netherlands and in, and in Belgium that, that have, uh, again, parts of the capability that, that we're offering here. We've tried to make this unique. We've shopped around and looked at what, what they had and where we could find niche capability that, that we could be uh, really the leaders in the world. And the combination of what exists here is really unique. Commissioner Hill. Thank you, sir. Uh, I guess my only question was um, with the manufacturing piece, I'm just thinking about the uh, job opportunities maybe for layman people. I know uh, Valencia already is working with Osceola County with their manufacturing program. Has this been included in this piece and how does it work? It is. That's a really good question. I, I, uh, I should have touched on that when we were going through there. We have uh, a, a strong partnership uh, with Valencia, and, and while uh, this uh, enables research to be done that, that's at uh, the doctorate level, the operation of the machines within, within ICOMAR have to be uh, handled by, by very skilled technicians. So those are uh, probably uh, on the order of $80,000 a year jobs for the technicians that will, that will support uh, ICOMAR, and we're in, in uh, uh, a good partnership with Valencia to help train those technicians and, and to provide them uh, into that workforce. And, and the, you know, the, the, uh, the hope here and the plan and what I believe is about to be reality based on all the interest that we're seeing in this is, is that this will just be uh, the first entity to be located in this, in this uh, uh, high-tech park that uh, Don talked about, the farm. Uh, if you will, and, and uh, the, the site planning that they're doing there is really going to turn this into what I think is going to be one of the most exciting high-tech campuses uh, in the world and, and will be a spot that many companies will choose to come and locate and bring, you know, additional jobs beyond what we're talking about uh, inside of ICOMAR. Thank you. Commissioner Gray, did you? Uh, that was my question. Okay. Commissioner Sheehan. Uh, th thank you, Mayor. And uh, just, I just had an overall, not anything particular to that project, but um, I just wanted to recognize, I'm sure she was already recognized, Commissioner Grieve has done a great job on the East Central Florida Regional Planning Council. We work regionally. I mean, those of us that serve on Metro Plan and the Planning Council work regionally. We don't understand what's really being done, but she's done an amazing job, both with roadways, sun rail and connections, the trail networks as well as the natural tourism the natural tourism on waterways and things like that. So we're all working regionally together and want to recognize her. So, but I, I think the challenge of that regional cooperation for us as a city of Orlando is, of course, we all, everybody wants part of our brand because it's a good brand. Um, 
The diff some, what part of the difficulty that we have, though, with this metropolitan area is we get beaten up a lot on crime, Orlando crime, Orlando crime, when a lot of it's in unincorporated areas, you know, even up to Seminole County. So I think that's something that we all need to work on together. We have a large tourism population that counts, does not count towards our overall population. So when they're counting crime, it just puts us in, a, mm -hmm. in that level. So I think that's something that we all need to kind of work on together. We embrace the regional cooperation, but then again, we get beaten up with, you know, the, the, the bad issues, so to speak. So I think that's something that we can work on a little bit more um, in terms of the image and things like that. Because like I say, we all, you know, all boats rise if we're all working together. Thank you so much. So that's pretty exciting stuff between uh, Creative Village, Medical City, and ICOMAR. We have uh, three great products that nobody else in the country really has, and certainly not all three of them together. So. I just want to emphasize the regional collaboration again. Um, somebody sent me an article from Politico on Denver and how well they're working together out there, and um, especially on transportation things. But I do, as Don mentioned, consider the assets that we have in the downtown regional assets, and similarly we'll consider the sensor project part of Orlando. and. Uh, Seminole County, I use the zoo as their asset, but I know they have other <laughs> assets other than just the Central Florida Zoo. But we look forward to continuing the collaboration and cooperation. And Byron, where are you? He looked like he had to go out. He stepped out. One thing I talked to Don about last week was maybe some additional um, joint planning on the Narcusi Road area because we jointly benefit from um, what's happening out there and want to make sure that we're consistent as we go into Osceola County or Osceola County transitions into um, Orange County and of course the airport owns the Poitras piece that is directly abuts Osceola County and mm, the Osceola Parkway will be coming through there in some form, some location, so having some additional discussion on that would, would be helpful. It, oh, oh, Commissioner Harford has joined us as well. Any of the other commissioners have thoughts that you'd like to offer? And I'm really excited you have the Country Music Festival now, too. <laughs> well, thank you for um, coming up today, and thank you for enlightening us a little bit on the things going on in Osceola County. We will stand adjourned.